everything that comes to you is a return of what has come out of you. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's audio, the great Alan Watts explains why it is that you always get what you want. Enjoy. You always get what you want, invariably. Even though you may think that it's entirely opposed to your wishes. But if it's your karma, everything that happens to you, put it in another way, everything that comes to you is a return to you of what goes out of you. Yes, obviously, that's absurd. If you confine the definition of yourself to your voluntary conscious behavior, that's a ridiculous definition of oneself. Oneself, by any, any stretch of the imagination, must involve far more than the conscious and voluntary aspects of our behavior. And if we see that it involves intimately and inescapably the behavior of what we call the other, the not-self, the environment, and see that these two are moving together like the two sides of the snake when it swims, then you get a very curious feeling. You have to be careful of it if you've got a Western background. Because, and this is what happens to a lot of people who play around with psychedelic chemicals, there are many, many cases of inflation among these people. That is to say, when you get this sensation that the two sides of the world, the inside and the outside, are moving together, you may think, I am ruling it. I am God in the Western sense of the word. Therefore, your ego, instead of being, as it were, integrated and uh, transcended with all this process, merely assumes vast dimensions, has megalomania, is blown up by the mystical experience. And so you get the holier-than-thou people going around who seem to think that they're above all human conventions and uh, have no obligations to anyone or anything because they're divine and they can do as they damn please. That what they haven't realized is that doing as you will, isn't a new kind of behavior that you suddenly put on and say, from now on I'm going to go around doing as I will. You have to realize first that that's what you've always been doing. And you could look at this from a very simple point of view. It's not a complete point of view. But you can say, well now what about the people who, who did good? and who did the things that they didn't want to do. You know, everybody's mother said to us, darling, sometimes we have to do things we don't like. <laughs> well, what about that? Well, you can always say, the kid obeyed the mother and did the thing that he didn't like because that was the better part of wisdom. In other words, if he hadn't done that, something worse would have happened. And we choose the lesser of two evils. And when you find yourself in a situation where you have to choose the lesser of two evils, then you say, I want out of here. And you take the easiest way. You take the line of least resistance. So that's your doing. Now, uh, you, you can pursue that more profoundly when you stop thinking about human behavior as something that responds to the compulsion of an environment. And you can get out of that when you see the behavior of the environment as an essential aspect of you. So it isn't, as it were, the environment starting something, which you are therefore compelled to follow. It's the whole system moving together. So then, you get in the state of liberated or mystical consciousness, you very often feel that a hill is lifting you up as you walk up it. The ground seems to heave beneath your feet, and up you go. And you get this strange feeling of lightness, of effortlessness, Walking on air, never a care, you know. This uh, wonderful sense that there are no obstructions anywhere. There's nothing, as it were, banging you and making you do that. It all flows together. And that's a very common sense. 
That's, you are actually, uh, in, in that state of consciousness, you are perceiving the goings-on, uh, the Tao, the course of nature, in the way it's happening. But in the ordinary way, you've been conditioned to resist it, to fight it, and to use those sensations of resistance to create a sensory basis for what you describe as the ego. The ego, in practice, is a sense of strain. When you are aware of I, you are aware of a dis basic discomfort. And that's what you feel when you talk about I. When that tension ceases, you discover immediately that the separate ego has disappeared. And that what I refers to is simply the total panorama of experience. Everything that's happening. That's I. And I can, obviously I don't know all of it, because I can't inspect all of it with my radar, with my conscious attention. That would be a ridiculous undertaking, to know everything in that sense. We know it in a much better way, as we know how to grow hair and open and close our hands. So, this point of view can be understood if we clarify the initial problems we have about it. And I suppose the first problem is, if we accept the notion that everything that happens to us is our own karma, our own doing, then we have to be very careful of, shall we say, the devil of omnipotence, of inflation, of uh, feeling that your ego is what is in control of all this. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.